All right, don't get me in trouble now. Okay. I uh, know, G-rated. But if anyone's uncomfortable with it, if you get up and leave, I won't be offended. But it, it will be all G-rated. Like you said, my name is Bill Morgan. I work full-time as an engineer. And I'm going to give one of my favorite lessons that I've ever uh, prepared. And I always like to say about this lesson, if you came in as an atheist, hear the lesson and leave as an atheist, there's not much more I can tell you. Because the stuff I'm going to share with you just, I think, is thrilling, glorifying the God, and I, I hope you enjoy it. Okay? Oh, let's open with prayer. Father, thank you for this time. We pray to glorify you through everything we seek and learn, and bless everyone here. And I pray that their faith is strengthened and they share it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's see, get this thing on. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. No, it'll work. It worked earlier. Don't worry, it'll work. Okay, my life story. I was born and I came here today. Thank you. Okay. Nothing has happened in my life. Uh, I was raised going to church every single Sunday, went to Christian camps, learned a lot of biblical teachings, and then I saw these in sixth grade. How many have seen these before? I remember exactly where I was. I was sitting down, I opened up a book, and it said, man had an ape-like ancestor. And I said, that's ridiculous. I closed it, I put it away. Three years later in ninth grade, my biology teacher taught the exact same thing. This is the quick summary of my life story. My ninth grade teacher taught me the same thing, and guess what? I believed it. I believed my biology teacher, but I'm going to tell you the real reason why. In sixth grade, I wasn't tempted by sin that much. In ninth grade, I was really being tempted by sin. Who can remember? All of you will be tempted a lot. In ninth grade, I'm thinking, should I be listening to the teachings and the restrictions of the Bible? Or should I be doing what looks to be so much fun? I was struggling. You guys remember the struggle, perhaps? It's a daily struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Galatians 5. Well, in ninth grade, my teacher taught me science said we had an ape-like ancestor. So I said, wait, if we have an ape-like ancestor, page one of the Bible is what? Wrong, because the, page one of the Bible teaches man was created how? From the dust of the ground. I go, wait, if the Bible's wrong about science, it's wrong about all those rules as a tempted ninth grader I said hallelujah amen I can do whatever I want they know when to really teach the theory of evolution about the age of 14 and 15 and so I sincerely thought hey science is disproven the Bible people would witness to me and I'd say I'm glad that works for you I know those biblical teachings but I'm an engineer I don't believe in that at the age of 26 I got handed a pamphlet uh, I don't want anybody to leave without some pamphlets I have on the back table. Oh, could you hold up the uh, IQ quiz? <laughs> Turn around, everybody, if you don't mind. There's some IQ quizzes there. I want everybody to get one on their way out. I got something at the age of 26 that talked about the actual fossils. Those are cartoon drawings. Everybody say cartoon drawings. Cartoon. What are you looking at? Cartoon Is that evidence you're related to an ape man? No, those are what? When I learned what the actual fossils were, like one tooth that later found not to belong to a pig, an ape jaw with human teeth forged into it, that was called Piltdown Man, taught for 50 years. I looked into it, I felt angry, lied to, and ripped off. I was on my way to hell because of a lie. And this is not science, this is fantasy. I've debated many, many PhDs. If you look up my name, you'll see them on YouTube. If I lost those PhD evolution debates, I wouldn't be here today. We have the letter T, which is what? Truth. truth. We have truth. Everything in science points to God. You need not be ashamed with your faith. So anyways, after I graduated, I decided to take classes at night to learn what's being taught. And I took biology at night in college. I loved it. Wonderful teaching. 90% of the class was great. The evolution part it was good to learn, but not scientific at all. But we're going to talk about one aspect. When I took the class, at the end of the class, there were different systems of the human body. And I love competition. 
I made it a competition. I said, I'm going to pretend all the different systems of the human body are competing to which one's the most complicated and the most amazing, okay? You got many. You got skeletal, muscular, nervous, circulatory, and I looked forward to studying which one was the most complex. Some amazing facts. Your respiratory system, your lungs, if you flatten them out, are the size of a tennis court. Your lungs have 15,000 miles of blood vessels in them. Each system is very, very complex. That's a part of your human body. Shout out some answers. You've heard of it before. What do you think that is? You can shout out. Don't be shy. Front row, what do you think that is? There's no bad guess. Part of the human body. Any of you? You're right, it's the stomach. Your stomach produces hydrochloric acid to help you to digest meat. Your stomach is meat. Why doesn't the hydrochloric acid dissolve your stomach? Because your stomach produces, gland, uh, has cells that produce a mucus like a toothpaste that is continually making a mucus to keep the acid off your stomach. So a question for the evolutionists, which evolved first? The cells that made the acid so you can digest food or the cells that made the mucus? Which one evolved first? You are dead if one evolves before the other, right? If you don't have the mucus, you dissolve your own body. If you don't have the acid, you can't digest food. God created you like he teaches in Genesis instantly. Everything at once. Amen? Okay. Your red blood cells, white, your, your skeleton doesn't just support your body. It produces blood. Isn't that amazing? I did a lesson how broken bones heal. Maybe next year I'll teach that. Just amazing stuff there, but we'll press on because of time. And your circulatory system, 60,000 miles of blood vessels, 15,000 miles in your lungs, very complex, but none of them can compare, in my opinion, to the reproductive system in, complexi in complexity. complexity. Your body is a house of what? Your body is like a billion house of cards. One card doesn't work, what happens? Everything falls apart. Your reproductive system is a house of cards. Thousands and thousands of things have to work or you wouldn't be here today. Now, creation also shows how much God loves you. All that we're going to teach today teaches that these things worked for you to be here. And to me, that much wonder shows that God loves you. How many cells did you begin life as? One. You started as one fertilized egg in your mother. About how many cells do you have now? A hundred trillion. You started as one, now you have a hundred trillion. Let's talk about that one cell. When you were one cell in your mom, you had all the information to make every eyebrow. The information for the color of the eyebrow, the diameter, the length, you follow me? Your eyelashes, your eyelid, your tear ducts, all that information in one cell. Can an atheist worldview explain how you get information like that from nothing? Impossible. Information comes from intelligence. One difference between atheism and us is this. I believe an entity exists with an IQ of a one followed by a trillion zeros. They think everything got here with an IQ of what? Zero. Big difference. But you guys decide for yourself as we look at the reproductive system. So there's a fair question by the cat. Well, how do we go from one cell to a trillion? Think. You've got skin cells, bone cells, muscle cells, hair cells, but you started as one cell. Think. You don't have hair in your spine, right? You don't have bone cells on your eyeball. The information put the right cells in the right place. It gets better and better for the theist. When you go from one cell to the other, the intelligent dog knows the answer. Stem cells. Real quickly, we're going to talk about stem cells. Who has never heard of stem cells? Okay, well, we'll give some real simple stuff because I'm not smart enough 
to talk over your head. A stem cell is a cell that is not currently what it's going to become, but it can be. You follow me? It's a cell that eventually will turn into something, like it might turn into a skin cell, a bone cell, or a hair cell, but a stem cell has not made that change yet. Okay? A stem cell has the potential to become a brain cell, a heart cell, a cartilage, bone, etc. Okay? Now, very important question. How many people are opposed to stem cell? Oh, how many people have heard this question before? What's your opinion on stem cell research? How many people are opposed to stem cell research? Okay? I'm going to change your mind because I didn't ask the right question. Okay? There are two types of stem cells. It's very important for Christians to know this. Uh, people who are against godly values manipulate that question. There's, how many people know there's embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells? Okay, very important. The question should not be, are you against stem cell research? It's, are you against embryonic stem cell research? You follow me? So you ask them a question if they ask you. All right? I'm going to teach you the difference real quick. An embryonic stem cell is a cell that can become anything. It can become a hair cell, a bone cell, a muscle cell, a skin cell. An adult stem cell hasn't become it yet, but an adult stem cell can only become a hair cell. This one can only become a muscle cell. You follow me? And the embryonic stem cells... I'm just getting frustrated. Okay. Embryonic stem cells can become any cell. An adult stem cell can only become a certain cell. You guys follow that? Okay, I think it's an important distinction. So once again, are you against stem cell research? I am against embryonic stem cell research, okay? Adult stem cells does not kill anything, okay? Embryonic stem cells gets to the origin of life. When does life begin? I, we won't get into that today, but all the definitions of life are when that egg is fertilized. It takes in energy, it metabolizes, it can reproduce, it can move, it can react to stimuli, it's alive. It's a scientific definition, okay? And if you want to use embryonic stem cells, that's a fertilized egg that they're using, okay? And once again, the embry embryonic stem cell can become what? Anything. Anything, okay? If you put an embryonic stem cell on your heart, what could happen? You could grow bone on your heart. If you put an adult stem cell that is a muscle cell on your heart, you're going to what? Get muscle, okay? So st adult stem cells, have they helped anybody? Millions and millions of people and animals have benefited from adult stem cells, okay? Those are the cells that are not embryonic. Nobody is dying with adult stem cells. Can I just maybe say next? <laughs> click, click, click. How many people have been helped by embryonic stem cells? None. None. Okay. So, once again, adult stem cells, wonderful. No one has yet been helped, but I want to be fair. Perhaps in the future they might be. And I'm not an expert in this field, but I've run up on it. To me, at this time, there's no need for embryonic stem cells. Many, many people are being helped with adult. It's a whole nother field. Adult is way more beneficial. So what's one of the problems with embryonic stem cells? I gave you an example. I put embryonic stem cells in your heart. You can grow bone, you can grow hair, you can grow anything. You want adult stem cells, and that's what they're doing. Okay. Trivia time. What's God's first commandment to man? I think I might stand up here. Maybe I get a better angle. Anybody? What? Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now we're going to talk about the miracle of reproduction. Okay? Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Okay? People don't always obey God, do we? Suppose God gave the command... And the process of being fruitful was like getting your teeth drilled at the dentist. I say this, think, how many people would be here on this planet, right? Did God think of everything? 
Yes, he did. He planned for everything. He made it uh, as a wonderful blessing for married people, okay? Oxytocin, we won't get into the details, but in the process of uh, reproducing, oxytocin is released, endorphins are released. Amazingly complex chemistry with your nervous system that results in what? The feeling of pleasure. Many of these drugs produce this as well, and it's a fake high, you know what I mean? But people get addicted to it. But very complex chemistry, God has produced. That's a nervous cell. If I had more time, I would talk how it works. But your nerves get a pleasant chemical that pleases you. So it's a lot easier for people to be fruitful and multiply. Now, this is a question, good luck trying to get an evolutionist to answer. How did male and female reproduction originate? Try to find them talking about the details. Evolutionists hate details. They don't talk about this, but I found one person who did. She's passed away. Her name was Lynn Margolis, but simplified. How did the humans get a system like this? 46 chromosomes, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 23, 46, 46, 46. How many people know what I'm talking about? You have 46 chromosomes everywhere except in the reproductive gametes, okay? How many people know that? Think, it's a fun question. How do people get 46 everywhere except in one spot of their body? Evolutionists avoid this question, but this lady looked into it. Lynn Margolis, she's passed away. She thinks she has the answer how we got 46 chromosomes everywhere, but half the number in our reproductive. Ah, I hit it twice. Cannibalism. <laughs> Why are you laughing? She's a PhD in science. Cannibalism. She said organisms were eating each other. Suppose you had a bunch of 23 chromosome organisms. They were eating each other. And in some cases, they didn't fully digest them. So she had, they had twice as many chromosomes in part of their body and half in the rest of their body. Is this highly intellectual? This is more blind faith fantasy than you can see in any religion that walks the earth. Sad. The, I love creationists to look into the details and things fall apart. Oh, and another thing, a little bit of business. I have a $5 devotional back there. I'm not making any money off it. it. Talks about little details in creation. Honor system works. If I'm not there, I highly recommend it. Because truth is on our side. Very confusing if you're an evolutionist. Now you might know why they don't look into the details on things like this. They cannot come up with a good answer of chromosomes count. Very confusing to be an evolutionist. This is what I'm convinced of in most people. Suppose you've really suffered a lot in your life. You might say, I know there's no God. I've suffered way too much. Now, how, how am I going to reconcile all this thing like life and plants and trees? And they will grasp at things because of an emotional foundation. If you have a rational foundation, you'll see this hand is a design. Who is that designer? But because of emotion, and I love atheist people, I was one for a while, people are atheists, not because of truth and science. That's why they don't debate. It's very hard to get debates. I'm just going to say next, okay? Okay. Now, this will be G-rated, but we're going to talk about some amazing stuff. How many ovaries do women have? Did you know that one month the egg comes from one and the other month from another? If a woman has an accident and one doesn't work, guess what? The other one does every month. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Next one, please. Okay. Egg release trivia. Next. <clears throat> you have these things called fimbria. See how I do that? That's so I remember how to pronounce it. Literally, like fingers, they grab an egg and it goes into the fallopian tube. Fascinating? I love this kind of stuff. Next one. <laughs> now, often when I witness... I use this fact. Some of these, oh, you're all going to get notes on your way out. I printed out a whole bunch of notes. 
Uh, they're on the back table. And so I think when I'm done, I might go to the back table and get those notes, because it's impossible to remember all this stuff. But this is one that I love. You've got to get the egg from the ovary into the uterus. You don't want the fertilized egg to stay in the fallopian tube. Why not? You would die. You, that egg cannot stay in the fallopian tube long. How does it get from here to there? I'll take some guesses. A lot of pain. Okay. Anyone know? It doesn't have a tail. Next one. Next slide, please. Cilia. The, the fallopian tube has tiny little hairs in it called cilia. The cilia move the egg down. But think, if, the ran if they moved randomly, the egg would go back and forth, back and forth. The cilia act like a wave at a baseball game. Anybody blown away by that? God's hand is on every cilia of every mammal to move the egg down the fallopian tube. How many people are blown away by that? This is amazing. This is how big our God is. God is bigger than the universe and yet has his hand on all of this. Okay? Next. So once again, the cilia looks very random. God coordinates it to move the egg down the fallopian tube. Next one. And the cat is right. That is definitely by design. I love animal faces. Next one. Genesis 131. Anybody know it? Anyone? Next one. God saw that he made, and behold, it was what? Very good. Quick thing on the age of the earth. A lot of people think there was death, destruction, and mayhem before man showed up. No, God's creation was very good. All the death and mayhem came after the fall and the curse. Next one. It's another lesson. The immune system. I just love this kind of stuff. The female has an immune system. And it recognizes the semen as an invader. Her immune system wants to kill the invader. The semen has mother cells to fight what the mother is trying to kill. You see that? So it's like a war going on. The immune system's trying to kill the invader, but the semen has more weapons, like my missile station, to, to be successful. And if it didn't, who wouldn't be here today? You wouldn't be here today. Next one. What? We, we can't make missiles this good. This is some quick details. It's just like a missile. Uh, you have your warhead, your propulsion, etc. We'll press on because of time. We could do hours on just that beautiful design. We'll press on. Next one. Now, is it circular? No, there is shape to the sperm. If you look at a different angle, see the angle on it? Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you that. Why is it angled and not one big bulb? It's more hydrodynamic. As tiny as they are, God made them as hydrodynamic as possible. I'd beat all of them to the egg. Pardon me? I'd beat all of them to the egg. Ah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Next one. So why is it shaped like an arrow? Does God know anything about hydrodynamics? Yeah. Yes, he does. Next one. Streamlining, least, less resistant for those little guys. Next one. Now, just think. In order for you to be here successfully, what abilities did the sperm have to have? You can shout out your answers. Endurance. Endurance, good. Speed, quantity, right? Next one. 20 million. A man is considered infertile if he is producing less than 20 million. That's a lot, isn't it? Next one. Has to be a strong swimmer. Next. And the right shape and many, many things more. We'll press on. Next one. Okay, how many sperm a day do men produce? Take a guess. 20,000, okay. Anyone else? Next one? Not bad, 100 million a day. 
How many has man ever made in the laboratory with all our great knowledge? Zero. Next one. How many eggs does a woman produce a day? Huh? I'm sure some of you know the answer. Next one. Zero. Women are born with 400,000. Has God got all the bases covered? But they don't make any more. Next one. So you can conclude that point is well. Right? Now, a female friend of mine said, no, that's because we got it right from the beginning. We didn't have to keep doing it. But. Next one. I love this one, too. The sperm has to find the egg. Or does it? Does it just, just think. Shout out your own. Do you think it just bounces around and doesn't know? Or does it seek and find? It can seek and find. How many people did not know that? It can seek and find. You all knew that? Well, I didn't have to come today. Next one. They did experiments. Suppose there were like 15 blocks and the egg was in number seven. The sperm would go to number seven. They put it in number 14. I get goosebumps with this kind of stuff. They think it has a sense of smell and it finds it and it, it seeks it out. Think of the information. First, it has to be able to know what to smell for, that it has a meaning. It processes that information. The more people learn about science, does it create more questions or does it become simpler? It becomes more complex, more amazing. Glory to who? God. Amen? Next. So they think most likely it has a sense of smell that it can seek and find. Well, they've proven that it seeks it because they can move the egg in different spots. Maybe it's a Holy Spirit thing where it knows how to do that. Could be, could be. But it, it seeks it out. Next one. Okay. <clears throat> this is G-rated, but don't worry. But I couldn't leave this out. <laughs> is it able to fertilize the egg once it get in, gets inside the female? How many say it is not? How many think it is? How many people can't believe that you're hearing this? <laughs> okay. Well, it can't. It can't. It is exhausted. Did God figure it out? Did God figure out a solution? It has many problems, and guess where the help comes from? No. The female. Next one. They need assistance from the female in order for pregnancy to happen. Next one. Pardon me? I said female. You said that. Oh, okay, I didn't hear you. Yes, speak up. Speak up. You're too shy. I can tell you. I am. Very shy person. Cool word. It's called capacitation. This is on your handout. You can look it up. Trillions of things on it. I sure don't have the time to do it. Next one. One thing it does, it gives it a bath. It cleans it up. It gets rid of the stuff that are no longer needed. Okay? And again, complexity way beyond that. Number two. This is unbelievable to me. It rearranges the heads of the sperm so now it can attach to an egg. At first they can't do it, but the female's body has the chemistry to do that. Next one. That's a rough drawing of what happens to the head of the sperm. Just remember, it's amazing. If you want to learn more, you can do it later. But I'm going to explain it to you. Next. And this is for the geniuses here today. Next one. Okay, let's explain this. This is just a one little detail where the female rearranges the head for that. Well, the hypothetical metal for the mechanism of cholesterol efflux and human sperm capacitation. This model shows the phosph... This is where I need help. Phospholytyl water interface to which cholesterol migrates and the... You guys get the point? Unspeakably complex chemistry, and this is just a snippet for that to be able to attach to the egg. How many people see God's hand? Atheism, a lot more faith than us, right? If just one of these chemical processes didn't happen, what? None of you would be here today. But hundreds of things just in this have to happen. Next one. And God is the genius, not us, amen? 
It's so easy to be humble to God when we know him as our creator. Next one. Another way, this one's simpler and this one's, I think, delightful. They help the sperm to swim faster. Next one. Okay. It's called motility. You see how wiggly that is? That means they have a lot of energy. But once they reach the female, they lose it. They're, they don't have as much energy. It's like they just ran a 10K and they're tired, okay? The woman's body, this is real technical, gives the equivalent of a five-hour energy drink and boosts their energy. Okay, so this is before capacitation. I, I mixed up the order. I apologize for that. This is before capacitation. This is after capacitation. See that? The female gives energy, so they have more energy to perform their mission. Next one. And we won't even get into the details on that. Just immensely, just a little bit of the chemistry of capacitation. The purpose, be still and what? Be still and know he is God. He is in charge. Next one. This blows me away. When does capacitation occur? Next one. Do you think the female body, suppose the sperm are there, capacitates all the sperm at the same time? Next one. Or the female is able to capacitate different parts at different times? What do you guys think? Right. Why do you think that? Because God made you guys first and he made women second and they <laughs> do it all better. <laughs> well, <laughs> how many female presidents have we had? Oh! <laughs> Not enough. Okay. Well, soon we might. But we won't get into to that. But think, does, they don't know when the egg is going to be released. I just love this stuff. Suppose the sperm was there and everything got capacitated. They get that five-hour energy drink, but after a while they have no more energy. But if the female energizes this much on a Tuesday, these guys on a Thursday, these guys on a Saturday there's more likelihood for pregnancy. You guys get that? So how in the world does it know to do that? Only the hand of God. Now, you were talking about this. Which sperm fertilizes the egg? 1 Corinthians 9.24, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you might win. Is it the fastest swimmer? What do you think? It's not. When I witness to people about this lesson, I like the cilia and I like this. This is how I teach it. And I try to always say it slow. The egg of the female is surrounded by three walls, three different barriers. It's not like germs and bacteria can touch the egg. It is protected by three barriers. Nothing can penetrate these barriers to touch the egg, except what? So you see the three walls? Sperm has three unique enzymes on its head. Each enzyme is designed to penetrate one of the different walls. Does this blow you guys away? I love this kind of stuff. Nothing can penetrate it except the enzyme. It's like three unique keys to get through three unique locks to touch the egg. What a great God. Try to be an evolutionist and explain that. How did those enzymes evolve? People would be extinct before they could evolve. You follow me? It has to be created on day six of creation, just like God said and taught us. If you put a dog sperm on a cat egg, it's rejected. Somehow the egg knows the species of the sperm. Okay? Never ends. Never ends. Again, how in the world could any of this evolve? Suppose just the sperm had only two enzymes. How many people would be here today at the Golf Academy and listening to this lesson? None. None. It's a house of a trillion cards. And only our great God could pull that off. Then Job answered, I'm so insignificant. How can I answer you? I love this. I put my hand over my mouth. When it comes to suffering, I just said it to my friend, 
it's easier just to let God be God. Say, God, may your will be done. I'm going to try all I can to do with this problem, but may your will be done with it, right? Because he is God, we're people. And just a little picture, a little trivia. The biggest cell in humans is the female egg. The smallest cell is the sperm. A little trivia for you. Okay. After conception, anybody ever heard of HCG? The little embryo starts releasing a hormone called HCG. This is how people find out if you're pregnant or not. An amazingly complex chemical starts being released after the fertilized egg. And what does it do? Yes. It, it causes the uterus to produce more nutrients to support the egg and the fetus. Okay? And that's how you find out if you're pregnant. It doesn't happen until the egg is fertilized. Isaiah 55, you guys all know this one. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Life is so much simpler if we put him on the throne as master, ruler, and king. Amen? Amen. Next one? I think I'll go back to that. Okay, another. The female body, does she, does her immune system like the idea of something implanting? Her immune system would have a fit. Scientists don't know how, but somehow the immune system is turned off when it's implanted. After birth, her immune system is turned back on. Okay, next one. You shall not dread them, for the Lord your God is where? He is in your midst. With all your problems and trials in life, God is still in your camp. Amen? A great and awesome God. Next one. Okay, what's that a picture of? What? Very good. Next one. Here's the next clue. Next one. Isn't that precious? Really, the only pro-life argument you need is that little hand. One quick thing that I learned about that don't try to win arguments. I once was debating a woman about pro-life. She started crying. Why? Well, she had had one. Probably. You know, she didn't tell me, like, oh, we have to be loving when we share truth. Amen? Next one. And a verse for my atheist friends. And love these people. They need your love. They need the truth. Next one. For you formed me in my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. It got cut off a little bit. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it well. There is no such thing as an atheist. They know God exists. They choose not to honor, acknowledge, or give thanks to them. The hardcore atheists, they prove they have belief in God. How can you be so bitter about something you don't want? Believe in are they mad about Hindu gods, Buddhist gods, the God of Islam? No, they're mad at the true God, Jesus Christ. Next one. Okay. Want to guess that one? Next one. Next one. The foot. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Think of the timing of the development. The skin, the blood vessels, the bone all have to develop at the same rate. If one's too fast, you got problems. Next one. Just as you do not know the path of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb, you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. If you just leave the lesson more humble, it was a good lesson, but hopefully you learned some stuff too. Next one. What is the only organ in the human body that's disposed of by natural means? Anybody? Nope. You lose 40,000 skin cells per minute. But that's a different lesson I did. Next one. The placenta. Not the city, the placenta. <laughs> huh. That's right. Next one. This, this just blows me away. How much blood from the mother, how many gallons of blood from the mother goes into the baby during pregnancy? Ballpark. Who wants to guess? How many gallons? How many? 20. 20. Any other? How about you? I know you're not shy. Starts with the letter Z. Zero. Zero. A pro-life argument. Not one drop of the mom's blood goes into the baby. Okay? The baby could be a different blood type. Okay, I'll, I'll try to make this simple. 
blood vessels leave the uterus, go into the placenta. And just think of a wall. The woman's blood is on this side. The baby's blood is on this side. And through amazing miracles, nutrients are passed from the mother to the baby and waste is passed from the baby into the mom. But not one drop of the mom's blood goes into the baby. Isn't that amazing? But think, between the uterus and the placenta, you've got what? Blood vessels. When the baby is born, what comes out after the baby's born? The placenta. So what got severed? She should bleed to death. All these blood vessels got severed, right? Think about it. The blood feeds the placenta. The placenta comes out. You just tore the blood vessels. And they do get torn. Why doesn't she bleed to death? It is connected. She should bleed to death, but she doesn't. Why not? Each blood vessel is surrounded by a circular muscle, a sphincter muscle. After the baby is born, guess what? This blows me away. Anybody else excited? I love this stuff. It shuts, and the mother loses very little blood. Suppose everything evolved except those circular muscles. What would happen? Every birth would result in death of the mother. But God is in charge. God is in your camp. Next one. And there's some of the pictures. There's 20 different connections. Typically, they all have a sphincter muscle to shut. Next. And that's what I just said. Next. And next. Okay, next. One reason I do this is I love to share my slides. If anybody wants my slides, those are all the notes you need. You see what I'm saying? So if anybody here wants my PowerPoint, just let me know. Everything I teach is understandable for a fifth grader. Next one. <laughs> Once again, if you're an atheist, how much evidence do you need? But it's an emotional battle for many of them. Next one. True or false? The pelvis of the female is the same as the male. How many say true? How many say false? How many say it's going too long? If they find a skeleton of a, in, in the field, the first way they determine the gender is by the what? Pelvis. pelvis. Next one. They are not the same. It, the female's pelvis is more open at the bottom. Why? No, because of evolution. Because of birth. Next one. There's the male, and there's the female. Female's white, bigger. Is it big enough to give birth? No, you knew that, right? It's still not big enough. So how did you guys make it today? Next one. It's still not big enough. I'll just explain it. Certain enzymes are released that dissolve certain cartilage in the pelvis to make the pelvis even bigger when the birth is about to happen. Amen? And then afterwards, the enzyme's no longer there, the cartilage rebuilds, and the hips go back to size. If that didn't happen, nobody would be here today. And we could literally do 200,000 examples of things that could go wrong. Next one. So once again, there's certain seams where cartilage gets dissolved temporarily, so it gets even bigger, so the baby can be delivered. What a great, great God. Amen? Next. Anybody ever seen a baby have hiccups? Raise your hand. Isn't it precious? Is there a purpose for it? How many people? If God's behind it, there's a purpose. What do you think the purpose might be for the baby to have hiccups? Pretty close. Next one. It's like exercise. Well, once the baby is born, they're on their own for respiration, circulatory, digestive, respiratory. And I don't have time to talk about all those. But next one. The hiccups are important because they have liquid in their lungs when they're born. But by having the hiccups, they've been strengthening their lungs to start breathing. And they don't have 10 minutes to start breathing after birth. All of these systems instantly have to be the baby's responsibility right now. Next one. So it's been practicing breathing by having these hiccups. It's not some atrophied muscle. It's a pretty buffed muscle. Once again, praise who? God. Yes, what a great God. Next one. 
Okay, all of those systems have to become the babies. Next. Anybody ever heard of holes in the heart? I'm gonna teach you as simply as I can what they are because I'm simple, okay? Next. I'm gonna talk this one real slow, but to me it's really cool because I love pipes. When the baby is in the womb, most blood does not go to the baby's lung because it doesn't need it for oxygen. It gets the oxygen from the mom. But there's a little bit of blood going to the baby's lung so it can develop. When the mother gives birth, a miracle happens. Once the mother gives birth, do you want the blood bypassing the lung? What do you think happens? Next one. The, okay, don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, God's in control, and I just pray for you to have humility with God's greatness. Next one. Next one. There's a valve downstream of the T. At birth, this valve closes, and guess what all the blood does now? Now all the blood goes to the baby's heart. Isn't this great? I mean, if we designed it, we'd be bragging about it, right? <laughs> God designs it and says, oh, they'll figure it out sooner or later. But the hole in the heart is often this valve does not fully close and a lot of blood is bypassing the, the baby's uh, circulatory system. And again, this is a lot simpler. Next one. And that's what it looks like. The little valve that shuts once the baby is born. Cool or gross? Cool. What do you guys think? Is that, that's your heart. Well, not your heart, but somebody else's heart. Next, but surgeons today can replace and uh, patch that up pretty easily. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46. Next one. one. Okay, what are some of the miracles of birth? Quiz, you guys. What are some of the things we talked about? Someone want to raise their hand? And the heart, the little valve in the heart that has to close. Anything else? Yeah. Cilia. The five layers, or the four layers, capacitation. And again, you have notes you can review more because you can use some of these simple ones as witnessing techniques and also to humble yourself and to be thankful, amen? Think of all the effort. Well, for him it was easy, he spoke it. But the thought that went in for God to make you. Next one. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another. Any artists here today? Anybody like to do art? What do you like to do? Like what? Specifically? Okay, suppose he made a logo. And I put up the logo and I said, hey, look at the logo I made. And you guys started saying, oh, wow, that's a good logo. Yeah, I worked really hard on it. Oh, Bill, you did a great logo. How would you feel? No, suppose you are God and you created birth, babies. All of these things we talked about, hearts, lungs, livers, kidneys. And you look down in America in the schools are attributed to chance and time. Think. God will not give his glory to another and we're saying everything happened by chance and stealing his glory. You guys aren't doing it, but a small percentage of people with a lot of lawyers behind them and a lot of anger have stolen God right out of the schools and taken away his glory. We have to equip our young people to who the glory belongs. Amen? Amen? Next one. If you're an atheist, you are not my enemy, right? We love the atheists. We have to be kind to them. I used to be one. Next one. Don't you have to believe there's a God first to deny there's a God? I didn't really want to think about it. Uh, but isn't that what makes an atheist? Seriously? You, didn't, you, you know there's a God, but you have to deny it, so that makes you an atheist. Well, you could say, I don't believe in purple animals with 600 legs and 50, 1,500 eyes, right? Right. But, but why would be, nobody's passionate fighting purple animals with 600 eyes. These people are hurting and they're dealing with their hurt by fighting God. And I say, your arms are too short and too weak to fight God. So who do they fight? You. The schools, right? And it's a tragedy that the country's going more that way. But, hey, the scientist told me I like the idea. But you know, deep down, I always knew God existed. I choked on a fishbone when I was 23. I could feel it in my throat. I was an atheist. Guess what I did? 
prayed, God, please don't let me die. I'm 23. Eventually the bone got out, and I was like, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve in the garden did what after they sinned? They hid. They're just like us, right? Okay, God, you can stop looking at me. I got that bone out of my throat. Stop looking at me. Let me sin, right? That's what we do. Amen? Mm -hmm. Next one. And when I was an atheist, I never looked into the details. I really didn't want to know the details because I thought it would lead to God. But at 26, I finally looked into it and felt angry, lied to, and ripped off. Next one. Every field of science screams God exists. So for the atheists, it's no skin off my nose if someone says an atheist, right? It's for your benefit, right? And if this is being recorded, I hope atheist people look at it. It's for your benefit to really seek out if God exists or not. And I understand the pain of suffering and grief. You guys do too. Being mad at God, but he does exist. Creation demonstrates that. Next one. Your answer to who Jesus was is the most important question in life, right? Who do you say that I was? Next one. And he's Lord. And it's not about religion. Jesus got mad at religious people. It's about truth. Seek truth. Amen? Next one. Amen. Anybody like to close in prayer? Would you? Nice and loud? I'd like to make a comment. Sure. I think God left his signature on the burden piece. You said that there's the ovary and the sperm has to penetrate how many? Three layers. Yes. Like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, perhaps? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Would you close in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just come to you now and agree with you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the creation that you've done on earth and the world and each human life here today. And Father, we just lift up uh, Bill and thank him so much, Lord. Just reward. He did such an awesome job. I just want to ask for a special blessing upon his life today. That, um... <laughs> what? Anyway, we want to just come before you. We want to thank you for this time of being able to fellowship and have presence with each other, Lord, and uh, love one another, and the privilege of being able to share that you are God and who you are and why we're really here. It's just for you. So thank you for all that. Your precious name.
Oh, any questions? Well, let's give it up one time for Bill. No question. I'll see you back there. That was phenomenal. Better than I thought it was. Where are you going? My book table. No, stay over here. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll release you in a moment. Do you want help passing out your notes? Sure. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so we've got these notes in the back, right? Yes. This is going to review everything you went over. So make sure you grab one of those. Mm -hmm. And then how can they get your PowerPoint if, they're, if they want that? I have a bunch of flash drives with me. Okay. Or if you want me to email you the PowerPoint, okay. I can email that. So that might be the easiest way for them to leave you My their email. Here. email. My or email they is can here. Just email you. Perfect. My phone number and email are here. I give free lessons. Do you want me to come to your church? Perfect. So grab one of these. Is the other thing you want to grab? Last time you spoke, um, I have church youth group every Wednesday night. I took a stack of these and mm. I was quizzing the kids. They loved it. Good. And so grab one of these. If you're interested in any of the information he has, just shoot him an email. Good. Awesome. Okay. And then um, you blessed me with one of these books and I'm so excited. Um, like Bill said, he doesn't make any money off of these. He just buys them in bulk and wants to sh share the blessing with you. Um, it's a daily devotional. Tell them about it a little bit. It's not a book where you have to read 300 pages at once. Every day has a little creation tidbit. Uh, typically things you don't know. And I'll give you one real quick. Birds, as you know, lay eggs in a what? nest when they're hatched the birds cannot go to the bathroom to they can't leave the nest to go to the bathroom so the nest should be full of waste right because the little birds can't leave the nest well this book teaches many 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 birds go to the bathroom in what's called a fecal sack if anyone's got a pen youtube fecal sack it'll change your life their waste comes out in like a water balloon the mom picks it up and takes it outside. They have a clean nest, no odor for predators to find it, and they're not getting real deep in waste. Now, once the bird learns how to fly, guess what it no longer does? It goes to the bathroom in that way. So, and that was in this book, and I YouTubed it, and I got the whole family together, and we we're all praising God if you saw birds go to the bathroom. <laughs> Now, if they had little bombs dropping like that, that would be cool, too. <laughs> Maybe that's what they drop on your car. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, I actually, I'm going to get a couple of these and use them as gifts. Make a great Christmas gift for somebody that you want to share God's love with. Because I think uh, if, if you don't appreciate nature, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> it's so easy to see God through creation. One last quickie. A co-worker, Christian guy, child custody battle. His daughter was saying, I don't believe in God. After three days of reading this with her, she said, evolution's stupid, Dad. I believe in God. I'm still mad at him because of the problems, but she be, she's on her way to becoming uh, born again. She needed this resolve, that God does exist, even through the suffering. Amen? And hopefully everyone learned something today they can apply and uh, get to review the notes and actually put it into application, share it with someone, because I know... I'm certain that God will put somebody in your path that you can share this information you learned with. Amen? Amen. All right, Jay's got a microphone. So there's Ralph. If you do have a question, we've got time for a few. Just put your hand up. We'll come over and uh, hopefully everyone will learn something. Yes. I was watching a program that was put on last night by the Creation Museum in Cincinnati, and they were talking about the dinosaur and how they believe that dinosaurs became birds. Hmm. And the gentleman that was speaking from the museum said that they've debunked that myth dozens of times, but he said they continue to hang on to it. So my question to you is because I know you deal with this a lot. You've talked to people and this, all this evolution stuff has been debunked. Why are they still hanging on to it? I, I don't understand. <laughs> okay, I did a Bible study. I have one called uh, witnessing tips, seven reasons people are atheists. They're not always the same reason. Suppose you were four years old and your mommy was sick. And all of you remember, and you pray and you pray, make mommy better, make mommy better, and six months she passes away. What might your response be towards God? You, can't, you don't exist, you can't do it, you don't care about me, you hate me, well I hate you. I am confident that if you gave a truth pill to Richard Dawkins or Bill Maher, you know Bill Maher is, 
I am convinced, I would bet everything I own, here's a truth pill. Why are you such a hardcore atheist? Why did my parents get divorced? Why was I abused as a kid? He wouldn't say, Bill, I studied the human reproductive system and that's by chance. So these people have a broken heart. They are convinced God doesn't exist because they seem to get emotional relief from fighting God. So they will be trying to prove their assumption. Okay, they're, there's no God, now let's look for the evidence. They're not going from evidence to conclusion. They're starting with the conclusion and looking for evidence so they buy into this. So there's a willing audience for it. Another reason, suppose you want to earn a PhD. What do you have to come up with? A thesis. A thesis, and it's got to be something that is accepted. new, accepted, interesting. So if you find a bone or a fossil, you might say, hey, evidence that a reptile became a bird, and you earn your PhD, and then three weeks later they falsify your claim, which has happened many, many times. Another reason, in China they keep finding these bones, they're making a fortune off of it too. A lot of people like in the media love the idea of it. Oh yeah, evolution's proven, you know, the Christians don't know anything. But they're continually debunked, and it's not because they're seeking scientific truth, in my opinion, or trying to prove a conclusion that they like. I was an atheist because I liked to sin. You want a manger scene? Fine, I think they look great. Cross on the hill? My brand of atheism, just wanting to say, I didn't care what you guys did, but the bitter ones do. Pride, we all have pride. There's nobody smarter than me, right? Some people, it's the only thing they've been taught. They have no bone to pick against God. Just, oh, the scientist said it's true? Okay, I'll go back to my life. And perhaps the strongest ally of Satan is apathy. Who cares? Right? If there's a God or not, I'm a good person. I'm going to go to heaven. Who cares? So apathy is another reason. They just don't care about the issue. So they'll just grab on. Okay, they said it's true. I'll care about my mortgage, my family, etc. And that's heartbreaking because whenever a celebrity dies or their parents die, oh, and I'm not picking, oh, my, they're looking down on me right now. Are you sure about that? What does the Bible teach, right? Yes. So many reasons to motivation to prove a conclusion where the data should come first and then the conclusion. Yes? Just a thought uh, that the blood doesn't come from the mother and, and the blood comes from the father and, and that's why Jesus' blood is so special because he was born of a virgin and, and, and through God the Father. Very good. So, Excellent. It's a beautiful parallel. And I think it's so important. One of the major things that I've learned from you, Bill, is that it is an emotional decision. People who choose to either be agnostic or atheist, if you can get down to the core issue, because you can talk about these things, and they're good. You can plant seeds and, and evoke some thinking, but if you pray that God give you discernment, give you a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and you actually get to that root of the issue, then it can really... Mm -hmm. really change their heart. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Bill, with, uh, for the people that are, uh, uh, you know, supposed, and I, I'm be careful here, Chris, say they're Christian but believe in mm -hmm. evolution as far as mm -hmm. God used thousands and thousands of years for all this to develop, this reproductive uh, that you shared with us today, I don't see how that could ever be um, they, how they can stand on that. You might not want to stand next to me because I might get hit with lightning. You might think I'm a blasphemer. God could not have created through evolution. Ooh. Who wants to be part of my experiment or a question? Anybody? Thank you. Okay, you. If, let's just pretend you think God used evolution. Did God create hearts or lungs first? Okay, well, the lungs are worthless without the heart, right? Because you've got to move the red blood cells. Did God create kidneys or livers first? Well, the kidneys, our liver is very important to filter the blood that goes to the kidneys. You follow me? What part of the cell did God create first? What part of tissue? What part of the brain did God create first? You follow me? What part of the stomach, the heart? 
Did he create males or females first? Male. Right, but very close behind came the female, not 100 years later. You follow me? What part of the reproductive system did he create first? There's only one way a human being could be created, and how's that? Instantly. It's not a car on your front lawn where you're slowly putting it together. Makes sense, right? He created the hearts and the lungs when? Instantly, within microseconds. You don't even have 10 seconds for a lot of this to happen. So if God could not have used evolution, the N-word sure could. Nature, right? How could nature make what we talked about? Only God could and it had to be instantly. So the Christians who believe in an old earth or evolution, this is my little play. I totally, totally love God. I'm saved by the blood. I know the transformation he's done in me. But all these educated people are saying the rocks I'm standing on are billions of years old and evolution is true. Maybe day in Genesis 1 doesn't really mean day. Maybe it means long period of time like an era. Maybe in the Ten Commandments where it says God created everything in six days and rested on one, and I'm saying these people love God, maybe that means eras or time frames. It doesn't really mean days, okay? So my opinion, they love the Lord with all their heart. They get so much badgering from the world, they're twisting their Bible. Nobody has studied the Bible and yelled out to their wife, Hey, Martha, we're related to apes. It's right here in the book of Full of Balonians. <laughs> hey, Martha, God created in billions and billions of years. Well, I, I was talking, the biggest church I've ever spoke to was a few weeks ago. I was talking to the pastor, and he said, I'm on the fence about this age of the earth thing. Like 3,000 people in his flock, by far the biggest. We talked for about an hour, and the thing that got through to him finally is I said, Pastor, do you think there was death? and suffering before the fall. Old earth and evolutionists think dinosaurs were killing and mauling each other before man even sinned. No, that's against the gospel. The curse came after man sinned. What God created was very, good. very good. There was, and that, goes, that makes all the sense in the world. No, how many people think dinosaurs went extinct 65 to 230 million years ago? There's no shame. Okay, one hand in the back. Fill in the blank. Pretend you, and, I, and if you do or not, pretend you think dinosaur fossils are 100 million years old. I could say, how come those fossils have not been, starts the letter E by now? Evolved. Not evolved. Eroded. Nice, eroded. Suppose I did this to your nice carpet. I'm eroding it, right? Seven, 100 million years, that rock has not been what? Eroded by now? It's impossible. Erosion is my favorite young earth argument. Granite, the hardest rock, you lose one foot of granite every 6,000 years from erosion. Fossils are in sedimentary rock, a softer rock. We went to Bryce Canyon, anybody been to Bryce Canyon? I brought home a 50 million year old rock Last April, I put it in water. Guess what? Dissolved. It's half dissolved by now. This thing stood up to 50 million years of weather, but it can't last in my cup of water. Bryce Canyon is falling apart before our very eyes. It is not 50 million years old. That dinosaur fossil would have been long eroded by now. They want you to think you are an idiot to think this is a young, dying, eroding, mutating planet. It is. This planet's dying as fast as we are, right? We're running out of water. It's eroding, falling into the ocean. Every time it rains, Big Bear loses its soil. They have to truck it back up there. The top of Mount Everest has limestone with fish fossils and seashells on top of it. They say the top of Mount Everest is 30 million years old. Fill in the blank. How come there's limestone on top of Mount Everest and it hasn't what by now? In 30 million years that limestone hasn't eroded? Call a geology professor, try to get them an answer. Their response will typically be emotional. Well, we don't know all the answers. 
Well, what's your best explanation? And since it's got limestone, which is coral, it tells you it was under what at one time? Water. Water. And I did a whole lesson on Mount Everest once. They think two huge plates moving at the speed of your fingernail growth pushed up that mountain that high 30 million years ago. Creationists think it was a global flood and plates crashed together. If you got in a head-on collision with a car and you're both going half a mile per hour, would the hoods go flying up half a mile per hour? What about 100 miles per hour? That's where you get the energy and that's a model for how we got mountains. But don't be ashamed. Those dinosaur fossils can't be that old. They'd be eroded by now. <laughs> so demanding. <laughs> okay, I know you. Oh my gosh, I'm putting a hit on him. Okay, this is just a theory. But it's not like for argument based or anything like that. But I just, I I look at the scriptures and you know the stories of how God parted the Red Sea. He didn't part the Red Sea in 24. It took 24 hours to part it, as Moses held the staff up and to do that. So when God says. A, 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 a day is as a thousand years is in a thousand years is as a day to me. When God says he created the earth in seven days, I think let's get smart on some of that. I think I don't think a 24 hour day personally. I think that God's time frame would be to put this entire earth together in that thousand years to have things grow. I don't think he grew the tree like that. I know what he did with humans and how he created Adam and Eve. I'm not saying that. But I think he everything in that time frame I started to think about that and I asked my husband I said do you think that maybe this is not a seven day process but a seven thousand year pro a seven you know a thousand years. Well, they want billions of years they don't want thousands I know but God didn't say that in his word he said a thousand years is as a day to me and a with day. the Lord yeah it's with the thousand, Lord right so, not with us but God created it so I'm just trying to figure he tells us one thing in one part of the scripture but he tells says something else over here so we don't know in interpretation we don't know if it's our 24-hour day or god's 24-hour day okay the context and i have a blue sheet that you yeah. can get oh when people leave could you give make sure they get the handouts whoever's back there please the out. I passed them out. oh they didn't good on your blue sheet it talks about that okay here i'll give you a cough drop <laughs> all right you didn't say how much no, we just, yeah, I'll tell you we're actually okay. over time Real quick, the context is time is meaningless to God. It's with the Lord. And he's talking about God's patience for people to repent. That God's patience is long-suffering, 2 Peter 3. They're not talking about creation in those days of a thousand years. And a thousand years is a day with the Lord. The, second, or the fourth commandment clearly teaches God created in six days, rested on one. Just like we should work six days and rest on one. And every Hebrew scholar throughout history believed that to be literal. Now some Christians who've learned one or two words in Hebrew are saying, oh, it doesn't mean that because of peer pressure. But we'll talk, I'll talk as long as you want. And yes, we are out of time. We've gone a little bit over, but I challenge everyone to take the IQ test. First question, phenomenal. Which came first? The chicken or the egg? Anyone? The chicken. The chicken. Close. You need two. You need a male and female. You're all wrong. Two chickens. It was two chickens. Right. You're right. And... and and they have to be adult because someone's got to feed them. Right. And they have to 